Okay, welcome to the video on the fundamentals of conversion analysis. I'm going to uh, use a program called AdEspresso, which I use in, in most of the campaigns uh, analysis on the Facebook side because it's once again it gives a nice little squiggly line graphical view of what's going on with the overall campaign health here, as well as let me dial into the different campaigns that have been run. Um, you know, here let's focus on you know what are what these different uh, values mean that we see starting out from this green block, click through all the way down to conversion rate, and let's let's talk about these individually, and let's break down how we're going to use this to interpret the readings of the campaigns that we're going to use uh, to build out uh, you know our top tiered, middle uh, tiered, or middle of the funnel and end of the funnel campaigns. In order to drive uh, sales conversions, so first, this is uh, click through, or what we call CTR, or click through rate. Our click through rate uh, in this campaign, as an overall, is 1.372%. Um, you know, that's obviously we, we want a little bit higher, but we, you know, we've got a lot of data from when we began out, and uh, you know, certainly it changes. Uh, certainly, you know, one and a half percent is probably something more than one, one point six percent. I'm looking for here. Um, now, the click through rates, whenever we go through and analyze the data from different campaigns, they're going to uh, consist of a lot of different values, especially initially. Anything that we run, I would say the click through rate is always going to be, you know, anywhere from 30 to potentially 50 percent less than what it's going to end up, you know, even double. Uh, you know, it, 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 uh, even 100%, it, it, it's, there's a lot of variance there. Um, and it certainly depends on the, um, you know, how many campaigns you've developed up to this point, you know, how well you're um, answering your target audience's pain points and you're able to give that solution effectively to them. Um, you know, certainly all calculates into what's going to be ending up with your click-through rate for the campaigns. And, and they're, they're really all different. You can look at it. This way, we've got a new campaign right, running right here that's running to on a top funnel, which means we're, we're uh, lead prospecting here, um, and it's got a two percent you know click through rate. Whereas a campaign that we're running here in the UK, um, and we really haven't we, we've paused this campaign for a little bit of time, but you know it's getting one point seven two percent. Whereas uh, this campaign, uh, this US eBay dropshipping V two. Uh, we've been running for you know almost 40,000 impressions, and we've got a 1.394% CTR. So click the rate is important. Um, you know certainly you know this this is this is no bueno. Um, this shows that we've got campaign failure, and I would imagine our relevant support is probably really low here. But right now let's focus on the, uh, the click through rates, and let's use this as a value of judgment. And it's not always our end judgment now. Whenever we evaluate a new campaign's performance, certainly click through rate with our audience um, that we've selected, um, our audience segmenting is going to be an important part of uh, what we do, especially at the top of the funnel, um, even you know here on retargeting campaigns in the bottom. So this this has got to be improved, and I don't know if there was some op optimizations that um, that have, you know that, that were placed you know different points in time up there. It's only been running for maybe ten days, something like that. Uh, but you know this is low. We want we want to, we want to improve it here. Obviously, I mean there's 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 a lot of room for growth here. We, we need to do a better job of getting back in front of our audience and getting them to um, take an, uh, an execution on the campaign. So that's something from a click through rate perspective that we're going to need to investigate at some point in time. So that's a good example of that. And you know then we look at the next one is cost per click, uh, also known as CPC. You'll notice that I say CPC a lot. Certainly, it, it's, um, it would help to, to use abbreviations for these different values, so learn them as best you can, and, and do understand that like things like CPA, you know, cost, you know, customer, you know, the acquisition cost, you know, at, at different points in the funnel are going to translate to an overall, and so they're going to have their different measures, and we'll get into that. But for now, the cost per click, how is it relevant? I mean, you know, look at it from the standpoint of if you were able to pay. Uh, one dollar for per click, and you're able to get only 
four out of ten, forty percent, right, to sign up. Whereas if you were to pay maybe a dollar fifty per click, but you're now getting a 70, 60, 70 percent click through rate or, or conversion rate, uh, which is better. And it boils down to uh, the math. It boils down to not only taking this CPC in relation to where we are in our funnel, but uh, to understanding how, you know, yes, we are trying to reduce the cost per click and while we're trying to improve our click-through rate on initial campaigns, but it's not always about that. Um, and, and certainly knowing when to read these different values at certain times and how to translate them is important. So let's look at the next one, um, you know, uh, let's actually look four down here on in impressions. Impressions is the, is, is the number of ads that we've actually ran. And from these, ad, from these uh, ads that we've run on this account, uh, we've had 327,000 impressions with 4,500 clicks. Um, you know, as an overall aggregate of all the campaign, campaigns, out of those 4,500 clicks, we've had 2,200 uh, convert. Uh, you know, it's showing our cost per conversion at uh, uh, one and a half British pounds, and we are showing a 49.211% conversion rate overall on all these campaigns. Now, conversion rate it different on different campaigns and different parts of the funnel mean different things. Obviously, this is skewed. This data is skewed more towards the um, top of the funnel because that's where we focused. You know, the first two or three weeks, and a lot of our ad budget spend is in building our list and driving traffic and converting it and improving that conversion. So, you know, here, you know, the, the impressions that we get. How things are read is we have 327,000 impressions. Out of those 327,000 impressions, 1.372% CTR or click through occurred, which resulted in 4,500 clicks at an average cost of 0 0.743 uh, British pounds CPC or cost per click. So we look at these numbers or, you know, aggregate together and then we're able to say, okay, out of these 4,500, we converted roughly half. And out of this half, you know, that we converted, what was our cost for this conversion? And, you know, in this instance, it's at 1.511 British pound. Um, now, this campaign, you know, obviously is using a lot of data. You say, well, what is conversions, you know, for the different tiers? And that's that's a different, you know, once we get into the funnels uh, courses, you know, we're the top, the middle, and the bottom. I'm going to show you specifically where to look and where to uh, tune because you're going to get a, uh, a cost or CPA basically on each step. And those added together, you know, aggregate, you know, of those scores or of those numbers is what's going to basically be your uh, acquisition cost. So don't get fooled that, you know, hey, I'm, this person is only paying buck fifty one to 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 get a sale. That's not the case here. This conversion rate data right now is really based on the top of the funnel and how I'm performing here. And you know certainly you know it's showing a little bit different values on this end than it is on uh, my click funnels end. I've got a little bit higher conversion rate, but there's always you know there's always data is always going to skew. I mean not everything gets picked up and happens. So overall, I mean, I'm happy with it. You know, it, I know from our conversion rates on our sales side, you know, at the bottom of our funnel, it works, we're good to go. So keep in mind, you know, really here, let's, you know, let's focus on, you know, how we're going to use the click-through rates and things like, you know, cost per clicks and uh, other things uh, that we bring into the loop, like the different audiences, uh, you know, even taking it further and looping in, uh, you know, uh, different lookalike pixels based on, you know, our customer list that we're building up, you know, at least 2,200 people that have come off this one, you know, out of all of our campaigns we've run. This is a good list to use, <clears throat> once again, for building lookalike pixels, you know, lookalike audience, you know, I say pixels and audiences kind of interchangeably, so, you know, it, Sometimes my, my language on this stuff is a little rough. I just, you know, uh, it is what it is. So here, you know, we've got 2,200. And, you know, out of this, you know, we can, out of this 2,200, we can build new audiences to go and find and prospect on our top levels, funnels, to find new and more audiences, you know, and more conversions and, you know, keep our costs down and be able to drive an overall ROI that's positive. Now, how do I know it's positive? What does it show me here? It's true. It shows me on other things. Like, for example... 
let's go here. Actually, let me see. Go here. We can go here and, and we're getting a, a readout of what we've what we've seen over the past month. And I keep in mind that we're not running any more uh, paid traffic to this page anymore. We split the funnel here. Uh, so this is really just organic traffic that's coming through this, you know, 32.93% conversion rate. I know it says the same and that's what we're getting readout on ours. I think we have a pixel conflict here and we do. So um, anyhow, uh, that's beside the point. What's the point is of this is understanding that in a, on a conversions basis, <clears throat> out of all the people that we've driven to our site, we're, re, we're driving traffic back to the sales page. Okay, first people come to this email opt-in page, uh, you know, and, and it's you know it's it's a simple page we've gone over, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure in other courses. Uh, so what we're doing is we're driving traffic back to the sales page using retargeting ads on Facebook as well as our, our emails and so that's why you see 1363 unique page views for the sales page that's way more than just this webinar so whenever someone registers over here to 628 that opt in that that you know that come off our cold top funnel you know out of 628 525 are going to land on the 100k webinar and, and it's like a thank you page so i mean obviously if they're opting in more likely it should be registering here unless they're bouncing off quick which if they are fine you know we still got their uh, contact info. So here we're driving people back to the sales page. So we're really looking at, you know, the people that have come back to the sales page, you know, about 5% of them have started the, the, the checkout process with, you know, resulting in 2.81% completing uh, the sales here. Um, you know, so we have a total sales that has resulted in, in an estimated uh, or an EPC of 770. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it's valuable in our instance because we know we're getting at least a three to one uh, on this, so we're still solid, four to one sometimes. Um, but the idea is that, you know, we need, we have a discrepancy between these 30 here and these 18. So we're now focusing our campaigns further down the funnel, um, which we'll get into, and, and that's really on taking the people that have started this process on the order page where they started filling their information in. We want to bring them back to increase our sales conversion ratio and get it back up above a 3%. So we've had, over the past month, we've had a drop in our sales conversion uh, ratio from about a 3.4, 3.5 down to a 2.81 now. And, and certainly this is, that's an area that we're having to focus on. And, and really, you know, it's because we've been focused on the top of the funnel and driving more traffic and more cold leads in. And now we're more focused on driving them through the middle and the bottom of the funnel here and we're bringing on the ads that are going to do that. So we're really, you know, the next 30 days, the goal is to increase this back up to a three and a half, four percent conversion. Uh, as soon as we can get it there, as we know we can. Uh, and, and that's just going to be relying on our retargeting ads uh, and other things. So overall, I mean, this is the kind of performance that you'd want to see. I mean, certainly, you know, the sales gross on this campaign was, was a lot lower than uh, the previous month, I believe it was 25, but we had a lot of revamping to do and obviously building out. Um, so we've, we, we went in and restructured. So uh, overall, I mean, you know, we're still happy with sales, still profitable, but we know that we can do a lot better. So that's some of the things that we're focused on now. And that's some of the things that we focused on, you know, as you go through learning uh, the different things in this course. So that is to kind of wrap your, your mind around the fact that the way you structure your landing pages, your Facebook ads, from everything from selecting your audience, which is very important, all the way through your creative and how you're able to talk to that audience and the cost and how to drive it down. Uh, and, and, and certainly keep an eye on it and not have it you know, balloon up on you uh, is important. So you have to be able to, to build and put them out there, risk it, understand that you know if you build five campaigns, you know, three are going to be losers, two are going to be winners, right? Maybe one, you know, one or, one or two. I mean, two, two is probably pushing it. So 
you know, expect that process, and that's why you really, you know, want to allocate your budget on the ad ad spend side on a daily, you know, say a daily basis. So let's say you start off at fifty a day, and fifty a day, you know, you're basically paying point uh, zero four three cent per impression on Facebook. So really, you know, you got to figure out what's your impression rates that you want to run. I mean, you know, if you want to go say after five thousand impressions a day, you're probably spending around two hundred dollars on the ad spend a day. And that's a big budget. Now, that's something that you would grow into, certainly after you start off, say, around 50, go to 75, 100, 200. It depends. It depends on what vertical you're in. It depends if you've already got an established, say, an established pipeline like this is, and you're just looking to come in to improve areas, then that, you know, it's different than having to build the framework, the skeleton that all, which we do in this course, you know, all the way through. So, the idea of being able to tune things once you have the overall engine running when you've got the Facebook ads running in connection with these uh, you know your, your landing pages and your uh, the way that you matriculate people through the sales process with your email campaigns and your retargeting ads is very important and you can also spot areas where you can do better and we've we've known this for the past few days we know that that this is something that we've got to improve taking these 30 and at least getting three, four of them to come back and complete the buyout process, which is going to improve our scores a lot. Um, because, you know, them purchasing the course, it's, it's a large purchase decision. So, you know, th them doing it is, is certainly, uh, you know, bringing them back. If they've already started the process. We know they're interested. Something distracted them. So we need to get them back. And if we can only get two, three, four, five, I mean, five is pushing it probably at this point, but we've got to improve here. And that's where you're able to, Take the data, look at what it's giving you. I mean, certainly we've had, you know, you know, 40,000 impressions to get to almost 1,900, you know, uh, page views on the email side. Well, you know, once again, this is not going to uh, show the real values here because we're running more impressions on the other uh, funnels that are uh, geographically based. So, you know, here, you know, from this, from basically page three here, sales page down, is is our is our accounts on on actual sales and, and conversions and stuff like that. So, anyhow, you, we take the data, you take everything together, and you put it together, and you have to weave it to tell a story. And that's really what I'm doing. Is same way I've just quickly looked at this and told you a story based off what I'm seeing. Is the same thing that you would you know do or practice to do in order to do the same thing with your campaigns, and it all starts with understanding how to read in data individually. Data, you know, whether you're reading it on, let me see here, whether you're reading it on, like, say the uh, the, the Facebook side here, you know, where we have our different uh, KPIs, what we call them, key performance indicators. Uh, that's something I'll use a lot uh, in throughout these courses. But, you know, we take these and, and by measuring each of the different elements within our campaigns, by breaking them down, say, even on a, uh, a more fundamental basis, uh, where, let me show you, for example, here we have created three headlines these three at the top, uh, along with these three ad text, one URL, which is obviously running, uh, we're running this through uh, ClickFunnels, so we're, we're split testing on that. Uh, then we've got one link description, and all these elements, you know, obviously you've covered in fundamentals of Facebook ads, or you at least get the idea that everything that we're doing with, whether it's emails, landing pages, or Facebook ads is all an element. We're just combining the different elements like baking a cake. We're just taking it and we're, we're looking at changing the ingredients within what we know is our base ingredient to find what, what spices, what flavors is going to best suit our audience and which, which spices they like for their geographical or even regional locations. So things can get very specific and you should. And I mean, and, and, we, and, and I do. I mean, that's really important to me. Um, but everything is about testing, 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 uh, taking, you know, a campaign like this and running it 30, 50, 60, 100 times and, and find different ways to vary it. 
you know, that's, that's very common, um, especially when you start getting down to specific uh, age range like this, where I'm doing it every year. <clears throat> this, is, this means that I'm, I'm going to very specifics here. Um, and I'm identifying uh, campaigns that are, you know, I'm going to pick within this, these age groups. And it could be something where I pick from an outlier like, 40 to 41 or an outlier like from 48 to 49 whereas these in the middle are, are underperformers or it could be vice versa where the ones on the outsides are the un, you know underperformers and the ones in the middle is where we're getting we're, we're prospecting and hitting gold we're hitting pay dirt and we know we need to focus our efforts on those so the campaigns get very specific we're using you know some you know this is an interest-based uh, campaign uh, we've used this in the past. We know it's it's, it's very it's profitable. Um, uh, you know we're, we're using some some lookalike pixels like I described. You know by taking our opt-in list and you know running it at different um, calculations. So here you can run it at one percent. You can run it really one through ten percent. I think well maybe fifteen percent, twenty percent. I don't know. Um, but you can you can make it as broad as you want. You know above eight percent. I don't really see any value. Uh, but this would this campaign is running very wide. So you know, a campaign like this, we would have run multiple campaigns already at one, three, five, now eight, and found hey, out of all these campaigns, this one this one's performing the best. It's given us maximum reach with uh, lowest cost. And obviously, out of these three placements, we're probably more likely running just on mobile or mobile and Instagram desktop feed for this business model or for this camp for these campaigns. Um, for tier one, for cold leads, is not as, as important. Um, later on, you know, you'll see where I'll do a mix, where I'll, I'll include all the channels that you can through Facebook for retargeting, and this this really to give me more opportunities to be in front of the, a potential customer and get them to drive back at a lower cost for acquisition to complete a sales decision. So everything we do in this course is, you know, we, we take everything, we break it down in an element base. Uh, you know, we're taking it, we're produce, producing ads that are varied, we're getting a lot of, you know, we're, we're testing everything. Everything's a split test. So you have to understand our KPIs such as click-through rates, such as relevant score, which we haven't even really touched on that, which relevant score uh, for most campaigns should be between um, uh, 1 to 10, uh, obviously 10 being perfect. Um, you know, uh, usually campaigns seven to nine is typical. Um, let's see if we got one here. Huh. Uh, it's because it's new. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's go to this one. Um, okay, we've got a relevant score on this one of 9.2. So you can see over time we've actually improved a little bit when I optimized ad campaigns after it first started. So it improved from a nine to a 9.2 within a day, so, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's held steady, and, and as you go through your campaigns, one of the things that you really want to focus on is when you, your relevant score starts being reduced, and your relevant score, well, what is it? It's, it's made up of, of, of page likes, reactions, negative, positive, everything. How many people were banning you, you know, go and say, do not show this ad from this publisher again, you name it. I mean, even to how well our click-through rates and these different interests are doing, and you can see those here. So everything has, you know, everything goes back to clicks, impressions, and CTR and CPC values. And also, your relevant score. The reason why it's important is because relevant score also dictates your cost per click and how much your ad is going to be shown to your market. So when Facebook really likes it, you know, you know, 9.2. Obviously, you're resonating with your audience. You, you've got a good message, everything's on point. It's taken us, like I said, thousands of ads to get here, and we've used the data to lead the way. And now this campaign is running, it's, it's holding steady so far, and we're, we're continuously increasing the budget on it, you know, slightly every day, you know, just to keep a hand on keeping it from, from failing. Because um, it will reach an inflection point where our, you know, the amount of money we spend per day is, is, is brings us no more value than, than the audience that we're hitting with this ad campaign. And we need to be looking for new prospecting methods, which we did, and you will too. I mean, it's a constant use of building, reading the data, making decisions, saying this headline works at this CPC or the CTR up here, CPC rate, 
it's got a dollar eighty eight, you know, or one eighty eight point or I'm sorry, one point eight eight one uh, British pounds. You know, we've got a thousand impression on it. Great conversions, you know, compared to the clicks, obviously. So, <clears throat> you know, we want you know we want these to run. We want our winners to run, and and that's what we're doing. We're let, it's kind of like horse betting. Um, you're you're picking your your winners, and you're letting them run multiple times. And over the long haul, you'll be able to find you know a way to profitability. And this one right here, we've actually had a reduction in our ROI recently. Um, so there's some things, that's why we've been looking at other uh, campaigns to run. It's really, uh, I think it's kind of where we're maximizing our budget right here. So we're going to have to bring this back down at some point, more than likely, unless we're able to uh, improve some on. But it's still, it's, 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 it's done its job. It's still doing its job. And certainly from this campaign, we've probably got two, three, four, five other campaigns that are running right behind it that are, you know, being optimized through, you know, to find our winners and, and uh, to, to, to continue on, you know, either to take its place or to be layered on because we've reached the amount of, um, you know, our max audience with, with this campaign. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go in here. So conversion analysis and, and how we, uh, you know, pick winners at every level of our process of our funnels, it's all boils down to being able to uh, uh, control each of those at each level at each stage so you know you're, you're looking at you know CTR CPC uh, type stuff you know certainly you know your acquisition cost is very very important um, it's very important because it's it's all about ROI and here you can see this campaign is running below our three to one you know expectations so we've got some work here to do and that's how you know when it's time to do work when it's time to take a campaign and say okay well, this headline right here, or these headlines right here, um, along with these ad texts or our performers, let's see how we can improve them and how we can wordsmith them and change them and make them better. <clears throat> and people respond to that by, you know, either clicking or not, or in completing the action, which is, you know, to provide us with their information to get a free ebook. So if they, you know, are doing that or not doing that, um, you know, it matters. So this campaign is very healthy. It's running at a 9.2. Um, obviously, we, we can dial in some more for audiences here. If you use Espresso, you, you'll see these top factors, which, you know, for a new person, you know, go ahead, you know, you can use these easily because uh, it's going to make a lot of the same decisions I would in the end. I'm just doing it a little ahead of time where this is going to have to have a lot of data to, to process. So, um, but certainly, you know, uh, what, what you want to do with these campaigns, I mean, let's take a look at this one really quickly so we can... Um, so we've had zero conversions firing off. This could be a couple reasons. One, we could the pixel could not be installed properly. Uh, two, uh, there hasn't been any conversions. Uh, certainly only 69 clicks is still pretty short, so we've got a lot of work to do on our list building. Um, but in this, you can see, uh, yeah, see I told you, it, it probably has a low relevance score. So we've got a lot of improvement to do in this campaign. You can see that we started out with an eight, and very quickly, you know, the campaign started underperforming. So this campaign needs to be taken down and replaced. This is a middle funnel campaign that's taking people that have just signed up for leads and it's retargeting them to get them to come back to either a webinar or to the sales page in order to uh, purchase this uh, product or service. And you can see thus far it's registering zero uh, on the goal side. So it's, it's not a winner. We've got, uh, looks like it's actually running to the webinar. So, uh, 69 clicks, and sanity registrations. Uh, that's interesting. We've obviously probably had some testing going on here that was either done and this is picked up. More likely that's the case here, but it looks like we've had, if that's true, I mean, even if, I, I doubt 100% of people have registered for this. So, there, there's always a ways that data gets skewed, and that's one of them. Um, certainly, if someone's gone on there, like you know, the, the owner of this business, and maybe he doesn't trust the payment gateway or the, the registration stuff, maybe he wants to try on his 30 different Gmail, Yahoo, and uh, you know, every other email address you can, you can think of, uh, you know, that could account for that because it's going to be firing on that. So certainly, if he's using it in combination with being a Facebook user. Um, so not everything's always what you see. So here we know that, that we're running this campaign to get people to sign up for the webinar. 
it appears to be doing well, but I, I, I would do a lot of investigating here, and I think that not that we need to be able to clean that up. And certainly, you know, by by cleaning this ad campaign up and going after better, uh, you know, putting a, a, a better ad together uh, is going to lead to that. Our audience is telling us that we're not doing a good job here, and it could be because of the image, uh, it could be because of a lot of things. But for this. We want to be able to focus, you know, that's where our data is going to tell us. That's our reactions and everything that's, that's calculated together. Um, one other thing I guess I can touch on real quick, you know, uh, especially on the Facebook ad side is uh, day parting. And you know, every day is going to provide different, you know, cost as well as time of day. And it's, it, as your campaigns mature, such as this past campaign, let me show you, uh, this is a campaign that's right for this type of activity. Um, where we'll, we'll, we'll go in and start day parting out and we'll start taking out times that are, that are uh, underperforming and costing us too much so that we're able to, to drive better traffic and, and keep our relevant score up. So everything matters, as you can see, it's all about conversions. Yes, in the end, but before you can even get to conversions, you've got to be able to at least get a message and audience correct, drive that audience, use your calculations of CTR and your cost per you know, click as well as the CPA as it kicks in in order to get you an idea of, of what you're going to have to be able to do. And certainly you're going to start out higher. And it's going to cost you know, two, three times more than what you project or thought. It's just the way it goes. Um, over the next month, 45, 60 days, you're going to be able to drive that down um, you know, to get it within range that you were predicting. And it's just an iteration process. Sometimes it takes longer, sometimes it, it, it's, it's shorter. So as you go through each one of these, you want to be able to focus on, you know, the values for each of the campaigns, the values, you know, whether you're running a split test on landing pages, like an AB, you know, uh, split test on, let's say, let me just show you, let me just go here. Uh, this is where we're running our Facebook traffic on. This and this is the you know we've gone through a couple iterations here, and you know right now you know our control page which is you know accounts for about forty percent of all traffic so far uh, to to this that since we started running and you can see when we started out we were getting fourteen percent thirty one thirty five fifty now sixty uh, this value is going to drop I mean we're going to you know fifty five fifty fifty five I'm happy I really am especially the cost for getting it up so. Here's where we're getting all of this, you know, traffic running purely through, and the people that are matriculating through, you know, the, you know, we can see people going through the webinar page and, you know, the sales page. Uh, you know, we're still getting some traffic here, and we're we're using this to uh, generate retargeters back to the sales page and order page, uh, in addition to the other other funnels. So, really, it's all about uh, conversions at each at each step and being able to control it. And in you'll learn in the videos how I was able to take you know, a low of 14% conversion and drive it up to 60 now. Uh, so it, it's, it's a process, um, one that took, you know, a couple, maybe two weeks. So it, everything is, is a learning process and so is this. So, and everything of the course, we're going to be referring to the data. You'll be hearing me referring to the same things, CTR, click through rate, CPC, cost per click, uh, CPA, which is a cost per acquisition. Uh, and that can apply to many things, you know, obviously at the top of the funnel, it applies to people that are just providing you with lead information. It does not mean that that is going to convert to a sell, but certainly when you build your list out of hundreds, you know, in, when, you know, this is at 546. Once this is gets into the thousands, I mean, you know, you've got to build your list up and out of that, you're, you want a one to three, four, five or six percent sales conversion ratio at the end. So, Everything that we do, we build up to, and we're able to do it for conversions. And conversions is all about uh, the numbers. Certainly, watch this again. Uh, there's, you know, really the homework from this is 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 drilling into your minds the what CTR, you know, how the, you know, is based on impressions versus the amount of clicks that it receives. How that's a valuable uh, tool to understand if if it's worth it or not. Set your thresholds at 1%. You want to at least start off at 1% and work your way up. Um, and each time you improve an element of the ad, you, it improves that as well. So everything, even with emails. Emails, you, you would split test the same way you, you would, or the same way you would with landing pages. And that really boils down to 
uh, you know, taking the same thing, and we'll go through that in the courses, but you're, you're split testing a variation of the same thing. And you do, you do it closely so you're able to get an idea. You're spinning, you're spinning, you're finding, you're looking, and then you take it and you run with it and improve it. Um, so it's all about the data and you use that to, to drive that. So whether you're going through and you're trying to improve your top tier performance like we have here, um, or you're trying to improve the sales or order funnel, you know, whatever part middle or the end of the funnel we are, we're always trying to improve. And the numbers is what it does it for us. So your homework is to understand the lingo. Your homework is to understand how we're going to use, you know, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to go through, but in each step you'll see us repeating kind of the same process. And just think of it, you know, you don't have to be perfect on it, but you just need to understand that it's, it's something that you will repeat over and over again and practice makes perfect. So, so practicing, you know, the, the different lingo that I've gone through, the different values, and see if you can come up with some different models. I mean, you know, you could do the math. I mean, if you know that, you know, every impression is worth zero uh, or 0 0.043 cents, you can go ahead and figure out, you know, kind of what you're going to have to get, you know, to hit your number. So if you want, say for example, to run 5,000 impressions and you're getting a 2% click-through rate or 1% click-through rate, do the math, you know, based on different click-through rates and then start figuring out, hey, out of all the people that have clicked to my site, how many people are now opting in? Is it 46%, is it 30%, is it 20%, is it zero? <clears throat> and from there, you can start getting an average cost. And then from there, you're wanting to then say, okay, now we, we can layer that in with the different parts of the funnel to get our acquisition cost, which is our CAC, customer acquisition cost. And everything that we do is a LTV, which means lifetime value, LTV to CAC, which is customer acquisition cost. Everything, because we're always wanting to sell, at least an upsell, a downsell, something. Cross sell, you know, provide, you know, maybe a subscription service or uh, another module or something that we're able to increase our uh, revenues or our profits over time compared to what we had to pay to bring that person in. And when you start looking at that, that's when like a three to one ROI is, is is what you usually, I mean, that, that's great. I mean, you're making money at that, at that return. Uh, three to one, four to one, five to one, that's within range. Obviously, if it's above it, and I've had them run above it, but that's where you know you need to increase your budget and go ahead because you're not getting enough of the market. Um, so really, that, that, that's going to conclude this. Focus on the different things I've talked about. We rewatch this video as well as all the videos that you're going to go into once you come out of the fundamentals. And really take everything and, and think about it and, and put it to practice because practice is going to make perfect. And it's going to take a couple weeks to get a hang of this and to uh, to get a hang of the way I'm going to talk about it. So watch this again. I know it's annoying, but do it and, and then let's, let's go ahead and move forward.